What if I told you Ethiopia's next mega project isn't about rivers, dams, or airlines, but nuclear reactors? That's right, Ethiopia just dropped a bombshell, a plan to build two nuclear power plants by 2034. Ethiopia, Way good, fan. Welcome to Semenenya Spotlight, your front row seat to the Horn of Africa's most explosive stories. Fresh off the triumph of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has unveiled a jaw-dropping $30 billion plan, and at its heart lies nuclear energy. If the GERD made Ethiopia Africa's hydropower giant, this project could make it unstoppable. But here's the question. Can a country where millions still live in the dark really go nuclear in just a decade? Let's break it down. A nuclear-powered Ethiopia, imagining the future. Picture Addis Ababa in 2035. The traffic is still heavy. The minibus taxis still hustle for passengers, but the skyline hums under a different current. The lights never go out. Factories run day and night. Electric trains connect Addis to Diradawa, Mekele, Bahirdar, and beyond. In this imagined Ethiopia, villages no longer rely on smoky kerosene lamps. Farmers power irrigation pumps with reliable electricity. High-tech industrial parks export not just leather and textiles, but advanced electronics. The middle class grows because power, the lifeblood of modern economies, is finally abundant and stable. For a country where today only 60% of the population has electricity, that is nothing short of revolutionary. Where will the nuclear plants be built? That's the billion-dollar question. The government hasn't revealed final sites yet, but several regions are under quiet study. The likely criteria? Proximity to water, geological stability, and distance from high-density urban centers. A far rift valley, Ethiopia's geological hotspot, where geothermal projects are already being tested. But the tectonic instability could be a risk. Near Lake Tana, Amhara region, abundant water and space, though politically sensitive. Southern nations or Aromia Highlands, central location, closer to industrial hubs, Red Sea proximity, Afar slash Djibouti corridor would allow easier export of nuclear generated power. Wherever they land, the plants will be more than just power stations. They will become symbols of national prestige, guarded as tightly as the GERD. What will it take to go nuclear? Building a nuclear power program is not just about concrete and steel. It requires a deep transformation of Ethiopia's institutions, workforce, and security architecture, technology, and expertise. Ethiopia has virtually no nuclear engineers today. Thousands will need to be trained abroad in physics, reactor safety, and nuclear law. Regulatory Framework A strong, independent nuclear authority is required to satisfy international watchdogs like the IAEA. Ethiopia must draft nuclear safety laws, liability protections, and emergency protocols. Security and safety. Guarding nuclear plants from terrorism, sabotage, or even regional wars is no small feat. Ethiopia will need military-grade protection. Financing. At 10 to $15 billion per reactor, this project alone could eat up half of the $30 billion package. Debt. Grants and foreign partnerships will be the only way forward. In short, Ethiopia will need money, brains, and iron discipline, three things it does not always have in surplus. Russia's heavy hand. Here's the twist. Ethiopia isn't going nuclear alone. Russia is the architect behind this dream. Moscow's state nuclear company, Rosatom, has already signed Memoranda of Understanding with Ethiopia for cooperation in nuclear science, energy, and medicine. Russia has used the same model in Egypt, Turkey, and even Bangladesh. Loan the money, build the plants, 
train the staff, and lock in decades of dependency. For Russia, Ethiopia is more than just a customer. It's a foothold in the Horn of Africa, a region of immense strategic value on the Red Sea. For Ethiopia, Russia is both savior and creditor, the partner willing to do what Western lenders won't. Critics warn this could put Ethiopia in a dangerous dependency, trading one form of energy reliance for another. But Abiy is betting that Russia's nuclear expertise is the only way to leapfrog into the future. Energy Reality Check Let's not forget Ethiopia's present. Today, the country has about 5,200 megawatts of installed generation capacity, 90% of it hydroelectric, but demand is growing by 20% annually. GERD, once fully online, will more than double Ethiopia's current output. But population growth and rapid urbanization mean GERD alone won't be enough. Renewable potential is vast. 60,000 megawatts across hydro, wind, solar, and geothermal. But financing and execution are weak. That's why nuclear is pitched not just as another energy source, but as the backbone of Ethiopia's long-term future. Yet, there is a risk. While mega-projects soar, villages remain in the dark. Nuclear might solve Ethiopia's power gap in the 2040s, but what about 2025, 2026, or 2027? That's the balancing act. Prestige versus practicality. Regional shockwaves. If Ethiopia succeeds, the Horn of Africa will never be the same. Energy dominance? Djibouti, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan, and even Kenya could plug into Ethiopia's grid. Addis would be the regional supplier of not just water, but power. Transport hub. A new airport rivaling Dubai would make Ethiopian airlines even more unstoppable. Industrial magnet. Reliable energy could draw manufacturing away from Asia into Africa. But failure is equally possible. Debt, technical delays, or political instability could turn this $30 billion vision into a nightmare. An overstretched Ethiopia might collapse under the weight of unfinished mega-projects, with public anger boiling over as lights still flicker in rural homes. the gamble of a lifetime. Ethiopia's nuclear bet is nothing less than a gamble on destiny. If it works, Ethiopia won't just be another developing country. It will be the nuclear heart of Africa, a continental powerhouse with unmatched influence. If it fails, Ethiopia risks being remembered as a nation of half-built dreams. Dams without turbines, airports without passengers, reactors without fuel rods. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has dared to compare the nuclear project to GERD. But here's the truth. The GERD was built on a river. Nuclear Ethiopia will be built on trust, discipline, and ambition. Those are harder to control than the Nile. Ethiopia has chosen the nuclear path, a road filled with promise, peril, and power plays. The world is watching. Neighbors are calculating and Russia is smiling. The next decade will tell us if Ethiopia truly goes nuclear, or if this, too, is another dream deferred. And there you have it, Ethiopia's nuclear gamble, a future that could crown the nation as Africa's unstoppable powerhouse, or leave it drowning in half-built dreams. What do you think? Can Ethiopia really pull this off, or is this too much too soon? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to Semenenya Spotlight, your front row seat to the Horn of Africa's most explosive stories. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss the next bombshell update. Until next time, stay sharp, stay curious, and stay tuned.